Well, I think I'm a screenwriter at heart. I feel much more comfortable as a writer than I do as a director. That being said, when I went to film school, I entered as a writer and then I changed to directing because the learning curve was so much greater and I just was so attracted to being behind the camera and having that control. Ideally, I think I would like to write and direct, but I think at heart, there's something about writing and the process of coming up with stories that I find most comfortable. But it wasn't until I was an undergraduate um, that I spent a summer in London and I went to the theater all summer long and the last performance I saw was a Peter Hall production of Lysistrata. And I remember just sitting there in the theater and I just didn't want it to end, I didn't want to leave and I thought I, I want to be a part of this somehow. And so I went back to um, Barnard and I enrolled in acting classes. I took film, an intro to film class with Richard Pena and an acting class and I fell in love. I just couldn't get enough. And, it wa and then I took an upper level narrative film class with Annette Instorf and this is, I, I saw films that just took my breath away and I sort of realized, wow, films can be political, they can be historical, they can be emotional, they are telling stories, they're doing so many things at once and I don't think I realized they had that depth. So I saw films like uh, The Conversation and The Conformist and The Pawnbroker and Sophie's Choice and The Tin Drum and these films have sort of remained central to me somehow, this sort of, uh, and I, I realize uh, too they're all about trauma in some way. So I think there is something about uh, uh, an experience that breaks the ability to narrate something and then the way in which in film you can sort of find a way to tell that story or use narrative to sort of get at that trauma, whether it's personal or historical or both. When I graduated from Barnard, I went to one of my professors and I said, I love film, like I want to be a part of this. How, what do I do? And she said, well, you have to go back to your room and you have to think about what you want to do. Do you want to make films or do you want to study films? And so I went back to my room and I got all these catalogs and I was looking at all these programs and I, was, I didn't have any films to speak of as yet and I just didn't feel ready to be an artist. And so that's when I went into a PhD program that was very creative and I had a lot of space and I could con continue to study. And I was also heavily involved in film studies at that time, but I really made the decision at that point to study film. I said, I've got to go to New York and I'll work on my dissertation there. But really what I wanted to do was check out the film making scene. And that's when I decided uh, to go to film school. And that's when I got serious about you know, being a filmmaker. I loved film school. There were these two options. You can make a movie or you can go to school. And for me, uh, I was a little shy. I was a little bit of an introvert. I felt like I needed structure. So I wanted to um, be around other filmmakers. I wanted to learn from professors in the, in the industry. So um, I have no regrets. In fact, it was the time of my life. I loved film school. And I loved it because the program I went to was focused on narrative and I chose it for that reason. It depends on what film school you choose, like what kind of filmmaker you want to be. Um, and if you want to, I mean, it's a, it's a huge expense. So I, I was fortunate to get a fellowship in the, uh, teaching in the English department. So that helped me fund the program later on. But it's a huge expense and it's a big investment. And but another thing that you do in film school is that you're thrown into a group of people who are just like you. So everyone, it was a huge class, it was a big community of filmmakers, and you are tapped in. And so you end up, when you get out of school, you're working with those friends that you've made, those, and now they're all professionals working the field. So there's a real uh, benefit, I think, to film school for that reason. Not that you can't get tapped into that community. Again, if you're a real go-getter, and you're very proactive and you're very young and you just want to start making movies in New York City, say, I think you can do it or anywhere for that matter, right? You can start making movies and you can, uh, again, sort of discover what people are doing there. And it's really sort of about raising consciousness about, okay, why, why that shot there, right? What are you doing here? What's the, what's the choice? Because it's, directing is about choices, right? The first film I made, and I don't know if I would call it a film, 
it was a sort of exercise, and um, it was called the A and B exercise, and it's something like, you know, character A is sitting at a table and performing some action, and character B enters and does something that either attracts or repels character A, and then character A gets up and leaves, and then character B sits down and does the action that character A was doing. So that's all you're sort of given as the structure of that exercise, and you have to f figure out what story you want to tell. It's, it's about the work. How do, you, how do you just show your work and let it be and learn from it and make it better? And you sort of have to just allow it and not, be, not try to control people's response to it. I was always crit I was very critical of my work, and I, and I think that got in my way. So I think you, have to, uh, you certainly have to be critical of your work, but you have to think of it productively, right? What did, what did I learn from this exercise? What did I do wrong? What can I do right next time? Because each film, you know, you're not going to get what you want, and you have to figure out a way to make it work, and then you have to figure out what you're going to do differently next time, or what, you, what you're going to take away from that exercise. When I was in film school, I went to see one of my um, professors, it was one of my directing professors, and he, he was really intense. He said, Julie, do you want to be a filmmaker? And I was like, uh, and he was like, do you want to be a filmmaker? I was like, yeah, and he's like, let me tell you something, you know, the people who, you know, I've been teaching here for many years now, he said the people who make it are not the smartest, they're not the most talented, they're not the ones with the greatest ideas, he said they are the ones who believe that they can do it. They think they are better than everyone else, and they just, you know, never doubt themselves. It's sort of like, I believe I can do this, I want to do this, and I deserve to do this. And he said, they're the ones who go and become filmmakers. It's such a difficult industry, it's such a difficult thing to become a film director that I think um, you have to believe in what you're doing, and you have to convince everyone else that what you're doing is worth it and is valuable and you need to believe that in order to convince other people to believe that so I think that's a very interesting thing that stayed with me. Uh, all the great filmmakers made, many of them made terrible first films <laughs> so they had to make those bad films. I mean this is sort of common knowledge now but I'm very excited to be participating or hopefully participating in this film festival because I think uh, I think it's okay to, I think I'm getting more and more comfortable with failing. And I think I, t I talk about failing a lot with my students because they come in expecting to know how to do this. And I think that's the biggest problem. Like you don't know, filmmaking is an, it's an art as well as a craft. And I think there, there are rules, but there are also ways to break those rules. And there's ways to express yourself and there's ways to communicate through images that, that you can discover. And so uh, really sort of finding your way uh, to communicate what you want to communicate is a process and uh, it's not immediate. I took a course with Philip Seymour Hoffman and he used to say just strive for excellence you know every day and he was very intense and he did the work and he wasn't sort of again uh, self-important it was about the work it was about the process it was about doing the best that you can do so I think about him as a, as a model. I mean, we're at a 12-year low. Uh, there are 5% uh, of the directors are female today. So um, it's not looking very good. So there's a way in which men sort of uh, think they're prepared. They sort of are, are willing to take that kind of risk. They, they feel ready. And I think women tend to think, well, I'm not quite qualified yet. I need to, I need to do more before I'm ready. And I think that uh, relationship uh, is, is the problem. I think I, I'm, I'm hopeful that more women, uh, now that it's so easy to get a camera and, and just start filming things, I'm hopeful that more women will start doing that just from the bottom up and just saying, you know what, I can do this, or will feel compelled to tell their stories uh, visually because, because they can. Um, but I do think it has to do with a sense of you know, you're, you're in power when you're a director. Everyone goes to you. You, you make the decisions. And I, I wonder if there's still a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, I think people don't necessarily assume that the woman is going to be that person. And I think film directing, it's not like a straight path. It's not like, oh, yeah, I just have to do this, this, and this to be a director. 
You know, it's sort of like you have to find your own way and you have to, again, it's such hard work and you have to convince so many people that this is a great project. Like, work, come and work for me on this, you know? Like, I really need your help or this is, look at the value of this project. It's very worthwhile. And sort of selling themselves. They need to sort of sell themselves to others. And I think that's where it gets really difficult for women, I think. I want to direct and especially now that I've taught directing, um, I think when you teach something too, you sort of take it in in a way that you don't when you're sort of practicing it on your own. Writing came so easily to me, but directing was always something that was so challenging. It was just really like, how do you do this? Like, how do you take this story and where do you put the camera? I mean, it's a daunting prospect if you think about it like why put the camera and if you don't want to just do it in a rote sort of way okay here's an over the shoulder you know I mean what uh, what can I where can I put the camera so that it's uh, conveying what I want to convey and what's the overall uh, understanding that I have and how do the pieces fit with the whole I mean there's a great deal it's sort of like a poem it has to all fit together as a structure right the individual parts and or like anything, like form and content has to go together. And so sort of figuring that out is really a puzzle to me and it's, it's a challenging one that I want to do more of. The pre-production stuff is, is tough for me. Uh, there's a lot of anxiety before shooting. Budgets, ugh. There's always a little bit of disappointment at, when you finish shooting because you always think, oh, I didn't quite get what I wanted and I'm a little depressed about that. And then once you start working with the footage, it sort of opens up a new world because it's like, wow, okay, now what am I gonna make of this? I think local filmmaking is where it's at. Um, I think this is the future of filmmaking, is, is going to be local. When I first moved to Spartanburg, that was all I could think about was, wow, what a great place to make a film. Like, it just has its own unique character and there's so many really beautiful places here and we have all these old mills and there's a lot of history. And so I think, um, being able to capture that and, and tell a local story is, is fantastic. And I think what the Expecting Good, Goodness Film Festival is doing is quite wonderful in that respect. I mean, it's sort of taking local writers, local stories, and inviting people to dramatize those and, and tell them, uh, tell those stories on film. And I think that's, um, that's really exciting. We, we thought, well, we'll, we'll you know, we'll, we'll keep our connections to New York, but we'll, we'll move to South Carolina and see how it goes. And we were really pleasantly surprised at how much we liked it here. And I think it has to do with the, the people and the intimacy and the openness that we found here. I think um, because it's a smaller city, um, you see people at the coffee bar, you see people at the bookstore, you see people in the grocery store, you see people at events, at local events. So there's a real sense of community that I feel here. It's a lot easier to make a film in Spartanburg, South Carolina than it is to make a film in Manhattan. So you can just talk to people, you can find your locations, you can figure out a way to do it. I think uh, it's much easier to do that. And I think I'm much more inspired to do that here than I was in New York where I felt the pressure of <laughs> all of this activity and all of these distractions. Um, I know that uh, film production companies now look to the internet for stories. Um, and so I think, uh, you know, viral videos, uh, I think if they're done well, you know, I think can be a way in uh, to the industry, a way to get an agent, um, a way to get some notice. And I wonder what that will do to the industry. I mean, I think the industry is already changing, you know, uh, video game watching. I think the, um, the way in which certain films now, I think, reflect uh, video games uh, and, and the way they're made and played. But social media could also be uh, a place to fund a film. Like there are sites like Kickstarter where you can say, I want to make this movie. Will you support it? Can you, uh, you know, help me fund this film? And I know people who've made films uh, through Kickstarter. One of the things I said would be to just get a camera and start experimenting with how you see the world. 
Um, but I also think it, it's helpful to have some sense of what, you know, what you want to do with filmmaking, like why you're drawn to it. Um, so some reflection about that I think might be helpful. Like, do you want to tell stories? Or are you just interested in really beautiful things? Like, you want to kind of represent uh, beauty. I mean, I've had students who've said that to me. Like, there's just something about, like, a Wes Anderson film or a Sofia Coppola film. Like, it's the production design that excites me. It's how the film looks. What, what draws you to the form? Like, why do you want to tell the stories you want to tell? Or what, why do you want to make movies? And really try to get at that. Um, uh, in order to figure out, okay, well, if I want to tell stories, then I would be thinking about, okay, you know, who writes about stories? Like, I would probably do some reading about that. That, that would be my sense, to, to get a little bit of a sense of what goes into a story. And, um, and then just experiment. And I think, uh, I think there's something to be said for uh, watching how filmmakers do it. Like, if you're watching a film, don't just sit back and watch the film. Like, turn the volume off, watch a scene, and then look at what the camera's doing. Look at when the, we move to the next shot. I think students don't see, okay, that's a new shot. That's a new camera angle. Why are we moving from that camera angle to that camera angle to that camera angle? Is it effective? Does it move you into the action? Does it move you away from the action? I mean, so, so really watching films in a way that you're looking at the form and thinking about what's happening underneath, like uh, how, are they, how are they constructing that, that story? I mean, it's really, it's daunting to me to sort of try to say in a few words because it's, it's such a, it took me, you know, again, years in film school to sort of take all this in and then, um, and, and, and sort of, you know, feel like uh, I, I have something to say about it. But I, I think, regardless, I was still making exercises and, and learning a great deal from just, you know, taking my camera and going out there and trying to make little exercises. And so um, practicing and, and trying to be objective or maybe showing it to your friends and saying, hey, what do you think about this? And they can say, I don't understand it, because that's most likely what they'll say. <laughs> You'd say, well, I was trying to do this. And they'll say, well, this is what I saw. And so there's really a, 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 a journey that I see when you're a student from, oh, this is what I, I thought I was doing, versus, oh, now what you think you're doing and what's actually happening. Uh, are sort of aligned. And so uh, being able to know how an image signifies. Uh, if, you, if you look at an image, it's like, what is that image saying? What's it doing? What's the effect it's going to have on the audience? And being able to have some sense of that is really, I think, important as a, as a, as a new filmmaker. You know?